My friend is a stereotypical old big bad trucker. I've seen some weird stuff with him while driving in South Texas along the border. He never batted an eye, but while telling me this story he had goosebumps and a concerned expression. Which from this guy is about the equivalent of a trembling lip and stained pants. I'll tell this story in the first person as he told it to me. Years ago in the late 90s I was on my way from the house, central Texas, heading to Laredo to pick up a load. It was early morning, around 4 or 5. I had just come off a string of days at home, so I know I wasn't tired. I am on one of those two lane winding roads in the absolute middle of nowhere, when I see something on the side of the road at the edge of my high beams. At first I just thought it was roadkill, as is usually the case. As I get closer, I see that it is roadkill and there's someone crouching over the deer carcass. I remember thinking either this guy's taking the antlers as a trophy, or he's sick. As I got closer still I can now see that's this guy's eating the deer. He's pulling chunks of meat from the stomach and bringing them up to his face. At this point he stops mid-motion and looks up at me. Not at my truck, but at me. He slash it stands up and that's when I see that it's huge, brown, and covered in hair. I remember thinking at this point, oh. This thing is standing on the tiny shoulder looking at me. By this point, maybe three seconds have passed and I'm about to the point in the road he's standing at. I didn't even think of stopping, in fact I'm starting to lay on it and get the hell out of there. As I'm passing it, it's looking at me, again not at the truck, it's looking through the driver's side windshield at me. He obviously has the intelligence to know that there's a driver in here and knows where I'm sitting. As I start to pass him I can still see its head above the hood of an old needle nose peat. Old truck design where the hood goes straight out from the windshield, known for being tall and difficult to see around, this thing is giant. I remember seeing what looked like human intelligence in its eyes. It scares the s out of me. Sorry for the wall of text. It's a story worth sharing though. I was headed west on I-76 here in Denver just cruising along at about 70 miles per hour. Out of nowhere, I saw a massive, almost solid cloud of what looked to be dirt coming at me. I'd say it was at least 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall. I scanned ahead of me but couldn't see any vehicle it could have came from. With nowhere to go I slowed down and took the hit, hoping there wasn't anything big enough in there to come through the windshield or jack up my truck owner slash operator. It was pretty loud as I smashed through it, the instant it hit I knew it wasn't dirt though. I immediately hit the washers because I couldn't see a damn thing through all of the carnage, my windshield was painted with guts. Turns out it was bees, freaking huge bees that sounded like rocks when they hit. I can't even imagine seeing that swarm if I was walking, they would kill the crap out of anything in their path. I bought a new truck several months ago and had to drive the 395 from Reno to Vegas to get it, damn lack of deals in North Nevada. Trip down was fine but headed back north it was later in the day when we left and it was dark by the time we got to Walker Lake Reservation. Late summer, pitch black at about 10 pm and little do I know that lake is known for midge swarms. I thought it started sprinkling rain as we rounded the bend but soon started pumping my windshield wash as fast as I could as my windshield was plastered with thousands of midges in a gigantic swarm over the road. I slowed from 40 miles per hour to 20 as visibility was poor at best for a good 2 mile stretch of seemingly endless bug bugpocalypse. I ran out of windshield wiper fluid near the end of it and had to drive 15 miles to the next town barely able to see. Had my sister-in-law with me and I'm fairly certain it was the scariest moment of both of our lives to date. Don't go to Walker Lake in summer after dark yo. Place apparently gets spiders so bad in the summer bushes look like wads of webbing. Also so much for my new car being detailed. I'm fairly certain the garage still stinks of bug guts after that power washing and there's still guts hidden in crevices on that car. Had a picture but not on this phone. I'm not a trucker, but a motorcyclist which kinda makes it even more spooky. Drove home from my GFS house, just a 20 minutes ride but it was 3am and the road goes through a forest without any street lights. So I ride through the forest, 
already giving everything my little 50 ccm dirt bike had in it back then and suddenly on the side of the road, a naked mannequin is standing. I saw it appear in my headlights and drove by it only doing like 60 kmh, it was scary as hell. A mannequin standing there naked on the side of a dark road in a forest at 3 am in the morning. Damn, I still get the shivers. I picked up a hitchhiker in my small Nissan Versus sedan, and we were driving down the freeway. There was a big vehicle in front of me so I couldn't see what was in front of that when all of a sudden the other guys start yelling tire, tire, and pointing ahead of us. I slammed on my brakes just in time to see the SUV in front of us swerve too late as the car in front of it swerved as this massive tire that was rolling down the freeway demolished the front end of the vehicle in front of me and bounded high into the air coming down in front of my car where the steel band broke and it stopped rolling. If I hadn't slammed on the brakes, it probably would have come down on top of me. He got out at the next gas station. I don't remember his name but I think he saved my life that day. Story time. This isn't something we saw but experienced. My dad was a trucker and in the summers I tagged along with him. One evening we were driving from Houston to Jacksonville and somehow we got turned around on the back roads of Louisiana. The last major place I remembered us being in was Troy at about 1 AM. Well it was almost 3 and we had no idea where we were. We eventually came to this little bitty town. It had one broken stoplight, a diner, an abandoned factory, and some empty shopping centers. In total it was maybe four blocks from one end to the other. We were both hungry and because we didn't want to wait to go to a truck stop, we pulled in behind the diner. Now that I think about it the fact that a small town diner was open at 3 AM should have been a sign that something was amiss. We get in and this diner is pretty nice actually. A bit old school, reminiscence of the 60s. There's a single waitress on duty and a cop eating in a booth. We naturally all got to chatting. I remember that meal so clearly because it was the first time I had grits. They were loaded with cheese and bacon. The cop gave us directions back to the highway and bought me a chocolate milk for the road. I even remember the tables. They were composite wood covered in polka dot contact paper. Well we eventually made it to civilization and later that morning at a stop my dad asks about the town. Cue a lot of confused local truckers. He was sure he was getting the name right but no one had heard of it. A few months later he was driving me back home to Texas and he drove through Louisiana attempting to find the town. We never could. We're still not sure what happened, if we drove through a ghost town no one remembered or something weirder. But I remember that night clearly. Edit, I'm trying to find the name of the town. I don't remember it but I've been talking to my dad because he thinks her wrote it down somewhere. Edit 2, Sparta, not Troy. Got my Greek names mixed up. Still looking for the town. I think it was somewhere off 507 and 9. Edit 3, found the name. It is Gramercy. I spelled it wrong at first. A search won't provide any diners nearby but it is possible that it's closed down. The abandoned factory was not abandoned but is apparently a sugar mill. My dad has a garbage memory so it's likely he was saying Grand Merci or something wrong to the other truckers, hence why no one knew what he was talking about. Mystery solved. My dad is a truck driver and about 13 to 15 years ago while resting at the side of the road he woke up in the morning seeing that his entire trailer was robbed empty. My dad's a heavy sleeper but his cargo could not have been stolen without at least a forklift and everyone would have woken up by a forklift unloading a trailer. My dad suspects the robbers used a pump to get some kind of chloroform into his cabin to make sure he couldn't wake up. This is my father's story and he wasn't a long haul trucker but rather a 18 year old gas station attendant in the late 70s and without a certain long haul trucker I probably wouldn't be here. The gas station was 24 hours and my dad was the only one working the night shift, 11 to 7 I think. A guy comes in and just gives him the creeps. Seems sketchy. 
He was wearing tight jacket slash pants and you could tell he had something in his pants under the jacket. It was during the summer and was warm so why is he wearing a jacket to begin with? It was later confirmed he was on drugs. A lot of truck drivers used this station as it was the only one open 24 hours for a long stretch of the highway. They also had a big lot where they let truckers park and sleep or take a break. On this night at this time it was just my dad, sketchy dude, and one trucker in there he kinda knew, as in, came in frequent enough to be conversational, and asked if he'd stay in the station and hang out until sketchy dude left. Well, after looking at the stocked shelves for several minutes while sneaking peeks at my dad behind the counter the sketchy guy eventually looked fed up and got into his blue car and sped off. Cool trucker guy hung out with my dad a little longer until another couple of guys came in to use the booths they had to eat a sandwich. I should also point out this was pretty middle of nowhere rural southeast United States and the 1970s. CB and landline was it. My dad only had a landline in the store. Dad did not have any protection or weapon of any kind. So the hours pass and my dad had shaken off the paranoia when all of a sudden this truck driver guy in a car comes hauling ass into the lot, jumps out, and sprints into the store hollering he needs a phone. He didn't have a CB nor did he see a phone at the other station. He also wasn't familiar with the area and my dad's station was the first place he found. Calls 911 to report that he had walked in on a gas station 40 miles back, next closest station, to find the attendant shot and dead. No one else around. And the only other piece of information is that a blue car was speeding out of the lot when the trucker pulled in. Apparently they eventually apprehend the guy in the blue car, my dad confirms it was sketchy dude from earlier in the night, and they charge him with murder and armed robbery. To the long haul trucker who waited around with my dad that night, thanks and hope you're keeping it real. Also worth adding that apparently sketchy guy in blue car was already a bad apple who was either being looked for or on probation or something. He was in the system. Edit, I'm editing this a couple months later, but I recently talked with my dad and he cleared a couple things up. So anything in bold above is edited. It's not much, but there it is. My friend, his wife, and several neighbors last year saw a large car drive to the river at the end of their street in Indianapolis and dump a girl's body. All in bored daylight at like 2 p.m. Of course the car sped away. My friend and another neighbor run up to the side of the river, and it's definitely a girl slash woman's body. Said he wanted to throw up, and did later on, this girl slash woman had obviously been murdered. They got the license plate, but do not know if the people were ever caught. Edit, some people have stated on here, this is not true. I did a web search on nothing. Blah blah blah. First off, the news does not show up at every crime scene where a body is dumped. Whether you believe me or not, my friend who told me this is not the kind of person to lie, and neither is his wife. He's one of the more outstanding people I know and gives a ton of his time to volunteering and helping the public in Indianapolis. I am not going to ask him about something that was really traumatic just to prove a point on Reddit. So, believe me if you will or not. It's up to you. But do not call it untrue just because you cannot find it in a damn web search. My dad told me and my brothers this story when we were growing up and it's always stuck with me, particularly on long drives when I'm feeling a bit sleepy. The first time I remember hearing it was after I asked him if angels were real, I was probably 7 or 8 years old. He drove trucks decades ago, before I was born and before labor laws around limits and brakes were more standard, I'm assuming it's different now? He'd fairly regularly accept calls that would extend his shift to where he was driving 24, 36 hours, or more without a break longer than a quick bathroom or fast food stop. My dad has a pretty mathematical brain, He's the type to make up logic puzzles out of something totally mundane just for fun. Whenever we were driving around town, he'd regularly ask me things like how long would it take us to get from home to the store if we were going 30 miles per hour but had to stop for 5 minutes in the middle because a family of kittens were crossing the road, etc. He'd come up with similar equations for himself while he was driving solo that involved things he was seeing like the odometer, mileage markers, the time, 
and then he could test his speed based on the equation, etc. One night after having already driven a particularly long day, he noticed his eyes getting droopier and the whole roll down the window and blast the music up thing didn't seem to be helping much. It was a rainy night on a pretty windy mountain road without a shoulder to pull over safely, so he started doing those logic games out loud to keep alert and awake. He was saying something to the effect of I just passed mile marker 146 so what time will it be when I reach 200 if I'm going 55 miles per hour. Then he closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and felt his head do the nod jerk thing which woke him up with a gasp. He opened his eyes to see he was driving straight towards mile marker 158, which would have sent his whole truck tumbling down a random ass mountain ravine. He was able to correct the course safely back, but it was a matter of seconds between that reality and certain death. He insists to this day that he slept through 12 miles of windy mountain road going 60 plus mile per hour, only to wake up right at the last moment between life and death. The story usually ends with him tearing up saying I don't know if there's angels, but I know there's something bigger going on in this universe than our human brains have been able to understand yet. If I wouldn't have woken up right when I did, you kids wouldn't be here today and that's something that feels pretty close to spiritual. Just thought I'd post this as a counterpoint to all the weird stuff. In the 1990s I spent a lot of time hitchhiking around Europe, I'm a Brit. One trip, I was hitching from Newcastle, my hometown, to the south of France. I got to a point just south of Paris, some little entrance ramp in the arse end of nowhere, it was around 2 am, and I was flat out exhausted. I'd placed my sign by my feet and was sitting on my pack, sleeping in place. I was woken by the unmistakable blast of a lorry horn, jumped up and ran, without thinking, to the lorry that had pulled up just yards away. The driver asked where I was headed, I replied south, and he laughed and told me to get in. After a fairly brief conversation about my trip up until that point, where I was going, etc., the guy realized I was literally, dead on my feet, exhausted. He pointed to the bed behind the cab seats and said if I wanted to get my head down, I was welcome to crash out. One of the greatest unwritten rules of hitching at the time was that the trucker's sleep area was sacrosanct, you didn't even put your bag there. So this guy, Eve, his name has just come to me, offering to let me rest up was out of the ordinary. I did a quick, split second, evaluation of am I going to be horribly raped and tortured, or is this guy legit? And decide I was safe. This was, in hindsight, probably based much more on my state of exhaustion than any true evaluation of his trustworthiness, but, hey ho. I jumped in the back, lay out flat for the first time in two days, and was asleep within seconds. Five hours later I woke up in an empty cab, parked in truck stop as the sun was beginning to rise. Eve returned within a minute or so, espresso in hand, and started helping me to get my bags out as cab. I should point out that my spoken French at the time was basic at best, and Eve spoke no English. Most of our communication was a combination of hand signals, confusion and laughter. We went into the truck stop cafe, a relay, for anyone who's traveled in France basic, but a cut above your usual truck stop as far as food and drinks are concerned, and Eve insisted on paying for a monster breakfast for me, whilst he only had another coffee and a croissant. As I was working my way through the breakfast, Eve was up at the counter, chatting to the proprietor. He clearly knew them, so I didn't think anything of it. Obviously he was chatting to his friend rather than doing monkey signs to the monolingual Brit, or so I thought. After a while, he came over and said he had to go, I knew this was my stopping point as far as he was concerned he was heading west whereas I was continuing south, at which point I thanked him profusely for all of his help, the breakfast, and wished him a safe journey. He wished me luck and went on his way. After I'd finished my breakfast, I went up to the counter to order another coffee before I set out on the rest of my journey, at this point I was about halfway down France, and when I handed over my money, the proprietor waved it away, saying it was on Eve. Yes, he'd paid for my next coffee before he left, on top of buying me breakfast. I gave him a little salute, thinking top bloke, and sat down to drink my coffee whilst having a little chuckle. Anyway, soon enough I figured I'd best get back on the road, 
So I went back to the counter to order a jambon boar to take away for the road and say goodbye to the proprietor, who had also been super nice to me throughout. Again, I went to pay and it was waved away. Eve had not only bought my breakfast, paid for a coffee he'd figured I'd have after I left, he'd also told the proprietor to give me a sandwich before I left, and paid for it. As this was all being explained to me, I just couldn't help breaking out in the biggest smile, and laughing like hell. What a bloke. I thanked the proprietor, asked him to sincerely thank Eve the next time he saw him, and went to hit the road at which point, I was then told to sit down and wait for about another half hour, as Eve had arranged a lift south for me with a colleague he knew was passing by. The man was an absolute gent, went above and beyond the helping your fellow man, and did it all without even sticking around for me to say, thanks. Absolute legend. Thanks Eve, wherever you are. So I was in the Virginia area, and had a lot of work-related sites ranging from downtown Baltimore to Virginia Beach and all around. Friday wrapped up, and I hit the road to some social arrangements I had made for the weekend. Spent the weekend with friends out in various parts of Virginia, got dragged off to other places even further out, the usual weekend fun times. It's late Sunday night when I have to leave, or I'm not going to be able to get home in time to start my, thankfully late afternoon, Monday. I'm fully rested, I didn't do any drinking, I'm not into drugs. On the highway at about 3 a.m., in the middle of nowhere between Roanoke and D.C., absolutely nobody around. I'm cruising along in the left lane simply because nobody else is around. No headlights for the past hour, no tail lights either. No road lamps either. It's dark, it's mildly damp, it's foggy. I have the music up, I'm feeling good, all is fine. And then I just happened to look to the left and there is a dog barking at me. A German Shepherd, in a car passenger seat, somewhat blue glow from the instruments inside the car, and it's got its face to its window and it's barking its head off at me. I get a good hard look at it, too, because at first my brain is not registering cop car, dummy. I'm doing 90 plus in a 75, I promptly have the oh damn. Moment when the dog, the instruments, the white crown Vic slash light bar all click in my brain after a second hard look. I put my foot on the brakes and start slowing down hard but safe, to pull over. I even put my blinker on to start shifting lanes over to the right to pull over because wait. There is no shoulder on the left side of this road. I look back to my left, where there is still no shoulder slash room for another car, and it's just gone. No trace. I slammed my brakes and stopped in the middle of the highway, flipped on all my light bars and even looked around with my handheld spot. There was nothing. No tail lights, no headlights, no engine sounds, nothing. There are no other tire marks in the damp but mine, and I can see for a nice long distance both ways, too. Nothing. My vehicle had great visibility, and a lot of extra lighting, off-road SUV with the trimmings, there is no possible way somebody pulled a sneaky, let alone drove that fast on wet sloped grass and rocks on my left side. So, yep, there you have it. Ghost cop and his dog didn't like me speeding, apparently. My dad has several stories from hauling logs in Idaho and driving trucks through Utah and Nevada. My favorite is from actually just in his pickup going through Utah. He said there was a light keeping pace with him out in the desert on a moonless night. It kept pace for a minute before it disappeared and his truck turned off. He stopped and turned it on and pulled off at the next diner. The folks in the diner called it a common occurrence. The creepiest is when he was hauling logs in Idaho and was coming down from near Kerr Delane area during a snowy winter night. He was putting on chains before heading down steep grade and said all of the hair stood up on his body. It felt like there was something watching him. Halfway down the switchbacks he saw a large figure standing on a 20-foot tall embankment. As he got closer it jumped down and the shoulders were as tall as the cab. In a single bound it leapt down and then leapt over to the other side of the embankment. At the time he thought it was a Sasquatch, now he says it was probably a demon trying to make him crash. He didn't stop to remove the chains until he was well away from the mountain.
I live in Spokane which is about 45 minutes away from Coeur d'Alene. I was driving back from my aunt's in the dark one night and just hit a massive wall of fog. I turn the corner and a whole herd of deer come running down the road toward me. I slow down a lot so I don't hit them. Then after another few seconds I see a woman standing in the street facing away from me with dirty clothes. The area I was in is known to have meth heads and heroin addicts so I cracked the window and called out to her and asked if she needed me to call anyone. As soon as I spoke her head whipped around and it looked like she was a burn victim, huge lidless eyes, no eyebrows, Voldemort nose, and a mouth that looked like it was melted or sewn up or something. Then she ran off into the woods and I drove a lot faster than I should have home. I'm a stand-up comic. I often refer to my profession as being a trucker with jokes. Near the north end of mainland Michigan, I saw a car stopped on the side of the highway. We hadn't seen a car for a while, it was 2 a.m. I commented to my buddy, poor bastard. But as we passed the car, the lights came on and it got back on the road. Odd timing. And then, it was gaining on us. I told my friend to speed, he did. He sped more and the car kept closing in. We were doing 120 and this guy was catching up to us. We saw an exit with a hotel so we took it and drove right in front of the building, where it was well lit and we could see the front desk clerk. The car got off that exit too. It drove into the hotel parking lot. Then turned around, and got back on the highway. I'll never know what that guy wanted from us. I'm fine with that remaining a mystery. Here are my three stories. One is creepy, second is paranormal and third is just crazy. Creepiest. Driving I-40 through Texas and Arkansas, I would see what looked like animals slash faces popping out of the bushes but longer than a glance proved nothing there. They had just paved the highway, and there was hardly any traffic. I was dead tired, it was super dark. Highway hypnosis I suppose. Paranormal. When I went to local driving, my route ran near an air reserve base in Indiana, so you'd see planes and helicopters pretty often. One night, about 2 a.m., I was headed to pick up another load when I saw a bright green light in the corner of my windshield. It was too low to be an aircraft. It moved pretty slowly, then darted and I lost sight of it behind some trees I drove by. Typical I saw a UFO, but I still think it was just a helicopter or a jet that I saw at the prefect angle that turned after a takeoff. The jet pilots have broken the sound barrier over town a couple times in the past, sonic boom. So a jet flying abnormally isn't necessarily out of the realm of possibility. A crazy one. Driving south on I-75 in the winter in Ohio, I witnessed a compact car like a Cobalt or similar get on the on-ramp to merge into I-75 north and lost control. They went sideways, fell at least six feet off the ramp and onto the shoulder of the interstate landing on all four wheels, spun 360 degrees, and then proceeded to merge into traffic like it was nothing blew my mind. The CB radio was going nuts for about 5 minutes. Holy SWHO else just saw that? Etc. My grandfather was in the Air Force and one night he was driving, back to his base maybe? I can't quite remember, and he saw a woman standing on the side of the road in a long white dress at about 2 a.m. He circled back to ask if she needed help and she was nowhere to be seen. He searched for her for about an before giving up, and deciding to leave it alone. When he decided to go on his way he had a strong feeling that he needed to switch lanes, he was on the road alone in the middle of the night so he had no idea why, and just ahead on the road there was a broken down truck with no hazards on that he would have hit, and probably been killed by, if he stayed in the lane he had been in. To this day he's convinced the woman was trying to warn him, like an omen or something. I'm a truck driver in the UK. Was driving through rural Scotland one night going down a country lane, all off a sudden I start to see flashing lights come through the trees. Lights of all colors flashing through the trees and causing some really freaky looking shadows on the road. 
I'm not a believer of aliens or anything but my first thought was UFOs. Safe to say I put my foot down and got out of there. Found out the next day it was rave happening in a field. But at the time it didn't half scare me. When I was a kid I grew up in the cab of my father's truck. He was a single father and I was on the road with him quite a bit. Occasionally if he was going to pass near my grandmother's house he would drop me off there for a week or so, I'm sure to give himself a break from a very young son in a very tight space. One time when he was nearing my grandmother's house I remember crying because I didn't want him to drop me off. I loved my grandmother very much but I was attached to my father for some reason. Separation anxiety I'm sure, thanks mom. As I was sobbing I started recognizing my surroundings and knew we were close. I decided the next song on the radio was going to be dad's song so every time I heard it I would think of him. I guess that's why they call it the blues by Elton John came on the radio so that chipper tune became the song I used to remember him. That was in the early 80s and I can't remember hearing that song over the last 20 plus years. Three years ago I was driving to see my dad in the hospital and I stopped at a truck stop for gas and snacks. What song should start playing over the truck stop speakers but I guess that's why they call it the blues. I got a sick nervous feeling. Was this a good omen or bad one? I'm not superstitious so I tried to dismiss it and chalked it up to chance. April 11th will be three years since I lost him. Surely it was just a random occurrence that I would hear that song going to see him for the last time right? I'm not superstitious or religious but I sure would like to see the old man again someday. Myself and two friends had to drive from Laredo, Texas to Baton Rouge, Louisiana one night in my Ford van. It was about 2 a.m. There is a particularly long and dark section of highway just outside Laredo, no buildings, towns or lights for about 50 miles. I was in the right lane coming up on a truck and pulled out into the left passing lane. As I was slowly overtaking this long truck, my peripheral vision caught a sudden movement of this big truck towards the right shoulder. I saw the truck was swerving to avoid hitting a person dressed in all white, white face, whose arms were folded across the chest and eyes were closed as they walked across the highway. I swerved to the left and barely missed this ghostly looking person with my passenger mirror, can still remember seeing that the eyes were closed, that's how close we came to hitting this person. I've driven cross country a few times. Have two freaky things that have happened. First, middle of the night with a buddy and we pulled off to the side of the highway to take a piss and switch drivers. Nobody else around on the road. I walk to the side, pitch black, whip it out and start to pee. My buddy is just stretching his back or whatever. I heard something in the woods shake a tree. No other way to describe it, a tree about 30 feet away shook. Then I hear something big crashing through the woods coming straight for us in the car. My buddy and I don't even say anything, he dives in the driver's side and I jump through the passenger window, pants still down. He floors it out of there, legs and pants dangling outside. Never did see anything in the rear view mirror but there was something out there coming at us. My buddy likes to say he heard me stop peeing when that tree shook. Second, I was solo somewhere in West Virginia. Again middle of the night. I got off an exit, one of those long curvy ones. I saw lights before I got off and assumed it was exit stuff, or maybe even construction. Get to the exit and it's not construction, it's a ton of army or national guard guys. The exit was lit up brighter than daytime, so many lights set up pointing everywhere. The army guys were completely decked out, gas masks on and assault rifles. They were sprinting around. One guy at the corner was frantically waving me through to get back on the highway. I gunned it out of there. Looked in the news later and didn't see anything, no idea what was going on that night. I was driving through Nevada on a long ride trip. About 3 AM, sun barely starting to peek out. My sister was asleep in the passenger seat and my parents asleep in the back seat. So it was just me, on a straight stretch of highway in the middle of the desert. 
I was exhausted and extremely bored from the lack of scenery when suddenly, directly in front of me, up in the pale sky, there was a flash of green and a green meteor carved towards the horizon before flashing green again and disappeared. At first I thought it was a UFO or something, but I later read meteors can burn green if they have copper in them. Now I think fondly back on that meteor, my family was asleep for it, no one around for miles. I like to think that it was just for me. I was at a truck stop in Arizona. I was pulling through the fuel island and right as I was about to leave roughly 15 cop cars came flying into the parking lot with a SWAT van. They surrounded a truck that was already parked for the night. I heard later that the driver had lost a tire or something off his trailer and it had killed a guy on the side of the road. Don't know how true that story was, but it sounded possible. At the old Flying J in El Paso I had pulled through the fuel island and was filling out logs and what not after filling up when someone started screaming help on the CB. It's not unusual to hear kids messing around or whatever but this sounded like a full grown man and didn't sound fake. It only happens for about 15 to 20 seconds and then silence. Some people started asking the guy where he was but never got a response. Suddenly another big rig in the parking lot starts to take off right as a couple of cop cars pull into the truck parking area. The big rig takes out a smaller sign and then jumps a curb out into the service road for I-10. Turns out a student got pissed at his instructor and stabbed him before leading the cops on a short high-speed chase. When I was doing the long haul thing, I was driving through Oklahoma, don't remember exactly where, but it was late at night, and I was already tired. While I was driving along and saw what I thought was a grim reaper, looked in my mirrors and didn't see it. At that point I decided that, regardless of how many hours I have left on my log, I'm stopping the next chance I get to rest. Later that night after getting parked, I turned on my CB and heard someone talking about a bad accident just a few miles beyond where I had stopped. After asking how long ago it happened, it turned out that if I had kept going, I would have been caught up in it. Edit, I do recall that I was heading north from Dallas, Texas. Looking at my old book that I kept of tracks I took I think it was US 75 North since Plano was on the list of cities I would go through on that run. Where exactly I couldn't tell you. My grandfather told me the story about how he was driving west to east along an empty stretch of road in southern South Dakota. He stopped at a stop sign at an intersection with nothing in sight, no buildings and no other vehicles. Then there was a bright light that hit him. He looked up and saw a bunch of blinking lights. Next thing he knew, he was at the counter of a diner about an hour down the road. It was about six hours later and he had no idea what had happened. He asked the person at the diner when he came in and the guy told him he came in about 10 minutes ago and just started drinking coffee without talking much. My grandpa told him what had happened and the guy said something like, yep, that happens around here sometimes. Nothing weird ever happened to him again. He avoided that area for the rest of his life. He said he doesn't believe in aliens and doesn't know what happened, but I had a suspicion he thought he had been abducted and just never accepted it. He told me never to tell this story to other people, but he died years ago and most of the people who knew him are dead, so I figured it was okay. A friend of my cousin was a long haul trucker. He was making a delivery across the country and was in a hardly used dirt stretch of a rural route. Since the road wasn't exactly peachy he had to drive slowly. He sees another truck slowly approaching from the opposite direction, and he sees the truck is the same as his. Since this isn't fairly uncommon, he didn't think much of it, but as the other one grew closer he decided to honk in recognition of having the same kind of truck. The other one replies and all is good. That is, until they narrowly and very slowly had to pass one another. He turned to look at the driver and he saw himself. Not a reflection not a similar person but his exact same copy, same clothes, same hat, same red beard, staring at him. They passed each other and that was that. He told me he'd seen very weird things, but that was the moment he decided to stop being a trucker.
One time I was driving home late at night. I was on a pretty major street line with shops with large parking lots. So I had a pretty good view of things around me. Being late at night there were maybe just a couple cars parked probably belonging to late night cleaners and whatnot. So I'm driving, and out of nowhere a baseball comes flying out of thin air and slams into my windshield. Like I said I had a pretty good view of the parking lots and there was nobody around except for parked cars. And even those were few and far between. I panicked and pulled off to the side of the road for a minute before driving off. I continued to look around and I drove but I couldn't find any sign of life. To this day I have no idea where the rogue baseball came from. I was in rural Maine looking for a lumber mill just before sunset. It took hours to get out there because Maine is riddled with these narrow windy roads that try and get as close as possible to every building in every village from US 1 to Canada. So I pull in just as the last guy is leaving, I ask him where to park and say I'll see him in the morning. I park my truck in this fairly large gravel parking lot with thick forest right on all sides. There are no visible artificial lights except for my truck and my flashlight. After I get parked I go and sit out in a lawn chair and just enjoy the warm night air and look at the absolutely beautiful night sky. It was a rare treat to enjoy basically no light pollution. As I'm looking at the stars, like a switch was flipped, what sound like 50 coyotes, 60 feet away, start howling like mad. It is at this point I nope right back into the truck and don't open the door until sunrise. The town of West Salem, Wisconsin has always kind of given me the shivers. It's like it's both empty and full of people at the same time. Nothing concrete just feels like things aren't quite right in that town. Edit, I thought of a third one. I was at the Lowe's Distribution Center in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. I was parked on the street, just outside the gate getting ready to head to a truck stop when a black cat crosses the triple railroad track in front of me. Call me superstitious but you had better bet that I backed up, turned around and went the other way. Not a trucker but my dad was. When I was young he'd take me on hauls sometimes. On one such trip, we were heading across I-80 in Nebraska and there was a snowstorm. We got to a part of the highway where a cop had blocked it off saying it was closed and we had to pull off for the night. We ended up pulling into an old Motel 8 that was closed slash abandoned and went to sleep in the cab. The next morning there were three sets of footprints in the snow around the truck. The footprints came out of the woods and circled the truck several times and looked like they had paused at windows and whatnot and then led back into the woods. Not sure what was up but I remember my dad acting weird and he didn't take me out on the road after that. My grandfather was an owner-operator for Valerie Trucking. He drove for many years and was still driving until a year or so before he passed away. When it was time to say goodbye, my dad, aunt, Nana and myself were about to go into the wake, standing on the steps of the funeral home, talking. My aunt, whose name is Valerie, saw a Valerie truck pass along the road and remarked about it. The truck stops at the stop sign, makes the right, pulls into the parking lot of the funeral home, makes a three-point turn in this tiny parking lot, and leaves. I wouldn't have believed it, but I was there on the steps. This actually happened the other day in a random country road in Tennessee. Pitch black darkness and the only thing around was fields, hills and me, didn't see any houses. Anyway I was getting real tired since the day before this I just flew from Washington to Atlanta. Was driving from Atlanta to northern Indiana and out of nowhere I see a dog in the grass and normally this is fine but its eyes weren't glowing from my headlights which for some reason really made me feel unsettled. Next thing I know it charged for the tire of my trailer snarling and barking, thank god I didn't hit it, and I looked back and it was gone. As bad as it sounds even if I did hit it I probably wouldn't have stopped because I was in the middle of nowhere with no cell service. I've heard stories of people finding some way to get people to stop in their commute in the middle of nowhere just to rob and or kill slash hurt the driver. It was midnight and I wasn't taking the chance. Two 
Two stories my dad has told me. While driving Pacheco Pass in California he had an empty trailer and it was really windy so it was swaying back and forth. He saw some girl walking through and he tried to merge lanes to avoid her and heard a loud bang. He thought he'd kill someone with the side of the trailer. When he could stop he was looking for signs everywhere and there was nothing anywhere not even a dent in the trailer. Second one was also in Pacheco Pass he saw some woman wandering on the side and stopped and let her in the truck said she was dripping wet. It wasn't raining but there's this lake next to the freeway so he thought she was swimming late night. She's silent while he's driving after a little bit he said he turned over to her and there's no one there his seat is dry. I told him to tell the story of the girl that got in his car when we were at dinner with one of his trucker buddies and when he starts off the story and his friend says wait that happened to me and explains the same story. Apparently back in the day truck drivers would kill and throw people in the lake or just on the side of the road. Friend of mine was driving an overnight through Arizona on a basically abandoned road and his truck started having electrical issues lights cutting on and off, no CB etc. After about 5 minutes of that a convoy of law enforcement slash federal emergency vehicles passed him. In the middle of the emergency vehicles there was a flatbed semi with a massive saucer shaped item chained to the bed and covered with tarps about 5 minutes after passing the convoy his radio and truck electrics came back up. He still recounts it as the craziest thing he's ever experienced on the road. This isn't that interesting of a story, but it spooked me and my friend pretty bad at the time. The lake where I usually hang out had pulled a body out a few years ago. There are crosses off the road and near the lake with his name on it. I googled it and he died under mysterious circumstances. His death was ultimately ruled a suicide, but there are many many questions that are left unanswered. One night, a friend and I drove to the lake at midnight and parked the car in the vicinity of the crosses. When it was time to leave, my car went haywire. The doors were unlocking and locking rapidly and my headlights were turning on and off. I panicked and asked my friend Spencer, that's not you is it? And he responded with I thought it was you. All this was happening before I had even turned my car on. After a minute, we got the car on and sped off. Never talked about it again. Not a long-haul trucker but I grew up on a farm. We grew peas and would run the combines 24-7. I ran a tri-axle dump truck back and forth from the various fields to the canning factory. I always preferred the night shift. Temps way cooler, less traffic, etc. One night we had some thunderstorms roll through. I was driving down a back road at like 2 a.m. All of a sudden a patio chair crosses the road at just about the max range of my headlights followed by another and then a large patio table went cartwheeling by. I immediately stopped hard. Thing got real. Truck started to move quite a bit and I'll be honest. I screamed like a little kid. I'm certain I would have rolled had I not been loaded down with 20 plus tons of peas. Confirmed tornado the next morning. My how I wish I'd had a dash cam back then. So, not exactly creepy or paranormal but scared me for sure. I've crossed the states many, many times in my career, I used to tour manage a band that consisted of four musicians and two crew, so it was a total of seven of us. We would often drive a white sprinter van with a U-Haul trailer on the back, and if you're familiar with U-Haul you know they have different pictures on the sides of them, often a state and something significant from that state painted on the side. We were about an hour outside of Roswell, New Mexico at 2 AM it was in the summer, we were coming from having just played the New Mexico State Fair. In every direction around us it was pitch black, no lights from cities or even rest stops, no other cars, nothing. We have absolutely no phone signal. All of our phones say no signal at the same time. It's a two-lane highway, the only illumination coming from our headlights. We haven't seen another car for a very long time. Suddenly on the horizon we see a light appear directly ahead of us. We keep driving normally, and the light is approaching us quickly. We, rightly, just assume it's another car coming our way on the other side of the highway, 
But then as the vehicle goes to pass us. It's a white sprinter van towing a U-Haul trailer with the exact same state artwork as ours on the side. Same tires. Same model van. Same trailer. Same everything. And as soon as we pass it, it's gone. All of us very uncomfortably said the same thing at the same time. Was that, did that van have the same, what are the chances, I'll never forget it. We couldn't do anything but just uncomfortably acknowledge we all saw the same thing and none of us were losing our minds. Not a long haul driver but I was driving through Texas at 3 am on a lonely highway. All of a sudden the highway shifted to the left. I sat up straight and though man, I must be really tired. Then it shifted again so I quickly pulled over. When I stepped out I felt some crunches under my feet. I was stepping on locusts. I hopped back into the car and saw what was happening. There were literally millions of wingless locusts on the ground as far as the eye could see. They would all move a couple inches to the left and sink across the highway. It was creepy as hell and the whole experience woke my ass up. I'm not a trucker but I'm a territory manager and my territory goes from New Mexico to Alabama and up to Kansas. So, it's not uncommon for me to have to drive from Dallas, Texas to Albuquerque, New Mexico and then from Albuquerque to Montgomery, Alabama and then back to Dallas all in one week. I've got a couple. I work for a premium off-road lighting company, so we work in the deserts at night a lot, usually with trophy truck and ultra four race teams. Last year I was coming home from King of the Hammers and it was about 4.30 am and I was on a state highway through the desert in southern New Mexico. If you've never driven it, you're basically as far away from anything out in the desert as you can possibly be. Impossibly straight one-lane highways that stretch from hundreds of miles. I was awake and alert even though it was so late, and I was totally alone on the road and had been for hours. Suddenly, Without warning while I was trucking along going about 80 miles per hour, the most insanely bright light came on right off my tailgate. It was so bright it lit up everything in the cab and was so blinding. I thought one of our race teams had snuck up behind me or something and turned on their light bars to screw with me, I drive a wrapped and branded, distinct show truck so it happens a lot. The light stayed on my ass for a good 30 seconds, and would stay right on my ass even when I'd swerve a bit or when I moved onto the shoulder a bit to see if they would pass. It was weird, it was like the light was bolted to the back of my truck or something. After about 30 seconds I had enough, so I flipped on my rear facing lights to give them a taste of their own medicine and instantly the light behind me went off and there was, nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Even though I was kind of blinded I have some really powerful backup lights and they came on the second the other light went out so there is no way whatsoever another vehicle was behind me, and there was just wide open flat desert all around so it's not like they could have pulled off and hidden and I would have seen them anyways. Just nothing. I was totally freaked out, but I'm not an easy scare and very comfortable with being in the desert alone at night, so I pulled over, grabbed my knife and my flashlight and had a look around. I shone my flashlight all around and even used some of my portable hyper spots. Again, I work for a lighting company and always carry around tons of demo lights to look all around me for anything and there was nothing. No cars, no trucks, aircraft, UFOs, nothing at all except wide open, empty New Mexico desert. My truck was totally fine but I know I wasn't just seeing things because the back of my truck was hot, like way hotter than normal. All the metal on the bed sides and tailgate was almost uncomfortable to the touch. I've never figured it out. The only logical possibility I can think of is I've read about ball lightning before and apparently it's attracted to metal objects. Maybe I found some ball lightning and it stuck to the back of my truck? I've got more stories if anyone is interested. I'm on the road and this convo is right up my alley. I'm not a trucker. I'm a writer, who spent the better part of the last three years traveling the deadliest strip of US highway, TX Highway 45, stalking long haul truck drivers. TX Highway 45 is a dangerous roadway, just because there's a disproportionate number of fatal wrecks. But, 
There's a more insidious problem, hiding in plain sight. Long-haul trucker serial killers have been working that strip with near impunity since at least the 60s. I spoke to an FBI agent who told me that, at any given time, there's an estimated 90 serial killers actively working the US highway system, and at least 30, his personal estimate, killing along the stretch from the Mexican U.S. Border to BC another officer heard those numbers, laughed and said, those are the PR numbers. I asked for clarification and he said, your numbers are low. Real low. He's probably right. In Texas alone, hundreds of unclaimed bodies, mostly unidentified, and all having met with violent ends, have turned up over the years, and more than one mass grave has been uncovered. Side note, I've been to one of these mass grave sites. I'd read about it and wanted to test a theory. The bodies were found in a field within a few hundred feet of passing cars and even a busy neighborhood. The field sits in a shallow land depression, and in a twisted trick of nature, no sound escapes it. Or, that's what I'd been told. I decided to check it out for myself, got a motel room directly across from the field and walked it. Standing in the depression where more than two dozen bodies had been discovered, I was close enough to the road to read the license plates and I could see and hear kids playing in the neighborhood across the road. A car pulled up in a nearby driveway and I could hear a man and his son exiting the vehicle, chatting, doors shutting, dog barking as they entered the house, I started screaming. As loud as I could, as if my life depended on it, I screamed, and screamed, and screamed. They didn't hear me. If they had, and they'd turned around, they'd have seen me waving my arms. Police believe the field's a dumping ground for more than one, and possibly several killers. It's my belief the killers choose the field to further torture their victims. What must it have been like to be fighting for your life, and to see help right there, and no one comes for you? You're invisible. Anyway, point is, there's major trucking routes leading to Canada from Texas. Statistically, there's an above average chance American serial killers are working in BC, likely other parts of the country, but since my focus is on Texas, I can only speak to TX routes. And in fact, US feds are convinced at least five unidentified suspects are operating along those routes right now. From my research, I think it's likely that over the next five to 10 years, Canada will witness a surge in body discoveries. Not necessarily because there will suddenly be more killers, but because of the HSKI, which collects and compiles data on active serial killers. Other databases were either difficult slash time consuming for authorities to input and or retrieve data, no laws requiring universal reporting protocols, etc. But, most significantly, older databases focused on perpetrator signatures and MO, which are not typically relevant in highway killings. HSKI focuses on geography, abduction, body disposal sites, etc. As the database grows, it will become exponentially faster and more efficient, like any database, there's a potential tipping point. So, instead of a steady increase, there will most likely be bursts of findings. So, if it makes you feel better, I wouldn't stop my car to help Jesus Christ himself. Sorry, JC don't get me wrong, I'd stop at the closest populated area, and not only report it, but raise holy hell until I actually physically witnessed police following up. Because that doesn't always happen. In fact, I've interviewed dozens of Texans along that route and a significant number of them expressed indifference about the situation or believe the killers are doing them a favor. Not all police feel that way, but I can tell you some do. I've worked alongside them and for some, the attitude is, basically, it's mostly whores and druggies, who cares? Had a Texas state trooper tell me point blank, saves us the paperwork. To clarify, serial killers are not lurking in every neighborhood in America. You're not going to see a nuclear engineer on every corner either, unless you're hanging out at MIT I'm referring to stopping on the highway, where they are concentrated. And no, not all truckers are serial killers. Not even most of them. It's like pedophiles. Plenty of great guys out there coaching Little League. But, of course, the job's very appealing to pedophiles, in particular. Further, I'm certain those hard-working truckers out there, note, America treats truck drivers abhorrently, are happy to have these degenerates rooted out and taken off their roads. Even worse than in the US, 
Mexico does a bad job of addressing their serial killer problem. A former Texas Ranger I spoke to said he suspects good old-fashioned serial killers are disguising their kills as cartel hits. Side note, more Americans travel to Mexico to commit sex crimes, and possibly even murders, than the other way around. American predators hunt there because poverty, poor reporting, a lot of prostitution and other illegal crime that make it a hotbed for predator activity. My dad is a long haul driver and told me this story years ago. He was in Detroit trying to find some factory in the middle of the night and was a bit lost and ended up having to drive through a really sketchy area pre GPS and cell phone days. As he was entering the area, he gets pulled over by a cop. The cop says to him something to the effect of you must be lost. Even we don't go through that area at night. My dad being the stubborn bastard he is tells the cop he has to get to where he's going and has already lost enough time trying to get back on course and needs to go through the area. The cop proceeds to tell him not to stop for anything. Tells him to roll through stop signs and red lights, and if anyone steps out in front of his truck top flag him down to turn them into a grease spot on the road and we'll deal with it in the morning. He made it through without incident but I imagine he was crapping himself the entire time considering a police officer told him that running red lights and vehicular manslaughter were better options than stopping his truck. Former driver here. You'd see all kinds of crazy things at night on the road. I've always been a night owl so I can't chalk it up to exhaustion, but I'm sure that none of it was what it seemed. A giant shaggy black dog running along and eventually across the road. A man with yellow eyes and a long black duster standing in the road smiling. More than one light in the sky moving and changing directions at speeds that make my head spin to think about. Phantom deer. Probably real deer but it sure didn't seem like it at the time. Injured people walking on the side of the road. Saw a few, only one ever turned out to be real. Glad I kept stopping to check. Lights in the trees like fairies. And my personal favorite, an enormous black creature with extremely long appendages and a hunched torso that tried to swipe at vehicles. I've read a lot about most of these phenomena and understand their explanations but darned if they didn't seem completely real and scary when I witnessed them. Some of them so much so that it seemed like a good idea to stop instead of risking it. I don't believe in ghosts and monsters but some of those gave me pause. Broad daylight, central Oregon. Nothing but some farms, and then sagebrush, for the next 94 miles. Homeless guy walks backwards into traffic while making eye contact with the oncoming vehicle, I was the second car so I saw it all. I had slowed from 65 to 40 to go around this guy, recognized his pack as the dude who was trying to hitchhike to Boise for the previous week. Pulled over at the next hill, called 911. And when I came back the other way 15 minutes later a sheriff is frisking him. Dude probably spent the night in jail, and I hope he got a bus ticket to Boise because I never saw him again. Back in 1990, a family friend bid for and won on a government contract to haul something from Nellis AFB to some random address in the middle of nowhere Nevada. He arrived at the address and nothing was there. He recalled seeing a diner about 50 miles down the road. Frustrated, he drove back to the diner for directions. Once he got inside, the diner owner told him to sit down, get comfortable and have something to eat. Just then, two black SUVs pulled up and multiple men in uniforms got out, came inside and asked for his keys. Six hours later, the truck was returned without the trailer with a full tank of fuel. He knows he was close to Groom Lake. Area 51, so he suspects it had something to do with that. I'm a trucker. I interact with motorists every day when I'm out trucking, whether it's sort of in traffic, or just in general in the truck stop as people standing in line for their food and coffee, going to the bathroom. I'm aware I'm like king of the road in my massive truck, but when people's cars go past, I like to think of those cars being occupied by loved ones. So even if they're a road raging piece of crap, 
there's still somebody's loved ones and it's part of my duty of operating the heaviest vehicles that they make it home safe just as much as it is my duty that I also make it home safe. But thinking you know, when I woke up, me and that person, both alive, got plans ahead of us, things we want to do today, tomorrow, this summer and by midday he or she's rendered into non-existence, his slash her body an inanimate object. Weird way to think about it. I have a morbid curiosity. I saw two sheeted dead bodies on last tour of duty. We knew the accident I'm talking about was fatal when we saw the coroner's van go by, following the forensics truck. Both me and my car driver immediately said op, this accident is definitely fatal. Be careful out there. Unless your hobby in life is shooting up fentanyl-laced heroin, I'd argue that driving is probably the most dangerous thing you do on a daily basis, where out of nowhere you can just randomly die. For that matter, the accident, my car driver said it was an SUV that rolled over, the driver's compartment compacted and inflicted a fatal injury on the driver, if I had to guess, probably blunt force trauma to the head area. My dad drove truck during the 1970s oil embargo. One night he broke down in rural Pennsylvania. He had to walk down the highway a couple miles back to a restaurant to use the phone and call dispatch. After the phone call he walked back to the truck. There was no moon, and because of the oil embargo the highway was deserted. From the tree line on the side of the highway came the crack of an enormous tree branch breaking, and then some movement. My dad stopped and called out, he thought it might be someone fooling around, or a hunter in the woods, odd as that would be at that time of night. No answer came from the trees, and my dad continued toward his busted rig. But all the way to the truck he was sure he heard something following him from the trees, matching his own footsteps. He locked himself in the truck and waited, uneventfully, until help arrived. Another night, again in 1970s Pennsylvania, in the mountains, a strange figure ran in front of my dad's truck. It looked to my dad who had not heard of Bigfoot yet that it was a man in a gorilla costume. When he arrived at his destination he told some of the men working there what he had seen, and asked if any of them had seen a guy in a gorilla costume running around in the mountain roads. They thought my dad was nuts. Those are my dad's two experiences with what he believes was Bigfoot. In the 90s John was an IT guy in parts of eastern Iowa and far west Illinois. He was used to driving from one account to another either late at night or early in the morning. He'd pick a halfway point to use a rest stop and to grab one of those awful paper cup coffees from the machines while he was there. One early morning about 4.30 a.m. he was in Iowa and he stopped at a wide spot in the road rest stop. He parked and there weren't any other people there except for a couple of semis who looked like they had been there for quite a while. He went into the men's room and it was deserted. He used the bathroom and went to the sink to wash his hands. He said he caught some movement from the corner of his eye and there was a very tall, very thin man standing right in the middle of the entrance about 15 feet away. He was dressed all in black and he says that the guy's eyes were pitch black. The man was giggling to himself and John swore he was at least 8 feet tall. He glanced down to grab a paper towel from the machine and when he looks up this man is so close he can hear him breathing with a loud bubbly sound. There's no way he could have crossed 15 feet in one second. As he told it, this man, thing, slowly smiled at him and it wasn't a smile. It was a bearing of serrated, sharp teeth and this thing starts chuckling like he's looking at a three-piece KFC meal. My friend screams Jesus help me. And runs for his car. My friend says the thing is startled, like he wasn't supposed to be able to move. He felt like he should have been frozen like staring at a snake. He runs to his car, which wasn't locked, slams the locks down, starts the car and floors it getting out of there. As he's leaving he looks in the rear view and this thing is running after the car. He always swore somehow this thing followed him home. He was paralyzed in an accident not long after and I went to care for him for a little while. I brought my four-year-old son with me and in his typical baby way, he would chatter away while the two of us were talking. I asked him one day who he was talking to. My son said he says his name is Biter. He has long teeth and he lives with Mr. John. I grabbed my son and ran out of there. I never went back to that house.
My friend was driving somewhere in North Carolina in the boonies and he severely messed up his route. Pulled over to try and figure it out. He's got his windows up and blaring music, absolutely nothing around him. As he's looking at his map he happens to glance back in his rear view and sees a guy in the distance running full sprint at his truck. Since the dude's in the middle of nowhere, doesn't even hesitate, says F this and guns it. As he does two other guys just narrowly miss him from the sides. As he's driving off all three of them are still running full sprint still at him. He said they were all dressed in black and were sprinting for as long as they were in view. He said he didn't even stop at red lights until he finally got to a truck stop. Dude was an extra 5 seconds of looking at a map away from getting murdered. I'm not a long haul trucker by trade, but back in the day I had several odd jobs that required I drive across the country. One was shipping horses, I drove the truck from barns to shows or vice versa and the other was working as road crew for a rock band. I was very very young. 16 to 20 years old. For reference, I'm female, short, athletic. Deaf the odd one hour at a lot of rest stops and gas stations along the major routes. I also am, was tattooed and had a red mohawk which made me stand out more. Several weird things happened that I remember. But first I wanna say, Navajo Nation is indeed really really creepy. Always drove through at night too, never meant to plan that way but that's always how it happened. Other creepy place is northern Utah. Totally hills have eyes up there. Anyways, here's story 1, I was driving from Galveston, Texas to New Orleans, Los Angeles. Galveston had just been hit by the hurricane, and there was a weird serial killer moving through that city, so the vibe had already begun as weird. Just as I crossed the border from Texas to LA, I started to get super tired. Was really late, 3 a.m. ish. Tried to find a gas station to pull over, rest, and fill up, but all of them were closed. Gave up, pulled into the next one which was closed, parked in the far corner of the lot, killed my car, a convertible Jeep at the time, and laid my seat back to sleep. Everything seemed quiet. There were a few lights from the station that were on 24-7 but I parked far enough away they couldn't really bother my eyes. I woke up with a start. Had been dreaming but I had this like gut instinct to wake up. I immediately saw someone covered in mud, wearing rags, holding a knife, advancing slowly towards my car. He was maybe 5 feet away, moving forward. My adrenaline kicked in immediately and I switched the car on. At that point he lets out some guttural growl and launches towards the car, as I'm backing up. I barely miss him as he's grabbing at the vehicle. With the headlights on, I could see he was covered in sores and the knife was all rusty. I sped out of there, didn't sleep again all the way to Nola. Freaked me out so badly. I also never again slept in my car. The idea he could have been watching me sleep for who knows how long freaked me out. My car was also a convertible, he could have easily cut his way in. That image of waking up to some crazy person advancing on me with a knife has also given me nightmares for many years. Second story, I was hauling horses from Kansas to Tucson, Arizona. Driving a big Ford truck, a dually, with a small trailer carrying three horses. Near Gallup, around 2 AM, the back inner tire on the passenger side blows out. I pulled off the road and assessed the situation. There was zero chance I could change the tire myself given the trailer, dually truck situation. And I'm tired and weak from exhaustion. So I call a tow company and try to find a temporary boarding place for the horses. It's the morning of Easter Sunday. Literally no one is open. I'm going through the yellow pages calling tow company after tow company, yes I'm old this is pre-smartphones. Finally I find a Native American tow company who also has a ranch with boarding for the horses and a truck to come grab the trailer. Was a godsend. But the guy and his wife, who ran the company, told me to be very very careful not to leave my truck during the two hours drive it would take for them to arrive. They said this in such an emphatic way I began to get really scared. They told me not to open the door for anyone and to keep the doors locked. No one was really on the road so I was confused as to who could really be a threat out there. But I took them seriously and locked my doors and waited. 
I kept hearing this weird scratching sound on the back panel window of the truck. Like someone was trying to open the small window back there. A couple times the truck would sway, which I figured was the horses. It was pitch black out. No wind. I heard a few footsteps but chalked it up to the wind or my imagination. Was getting scared out there alone unable to move. Eventually the nice couple with the tow truck and other truck to haul the ponies show up. They immediately and first move me from my cabin to the cabin of their tow truck. Tell me not to move or open the door under any circumstances. The couple is super fast, lady deals with the horses, man gets my truck up on the tow bed. They then drive me to their ranch, after the man drops my truck off at a local shop owned by his cousin who he says will handle the flat on Monday. Anyways long story short, this wonderful couple takes care of me and the horses, gets my truck tire fixed. As I'm ready to leave on Monday afternoon, there's a story on the local news of a woman with a flat tire who was murdered alongside the same stretch of highway on Sunday evening. She'd been out changing a tire and looks like someone murdered her. I asked the couple and they didn't say much other than to never ever get out of the car at night along this highway, ever. Said it was certain death. They also gave me some bags of potpourri stuff to have, burn in my truck cabin for protection. I felt very lucky to find these nice people to be honest. They deaf looked out for me and never once did I feel unsafe staying at their house. I was 18 at the time and deaf knew nothing about safety along trucking routes. But from now on I drive through that area and I don't stop if I can avoid it. Load up on gas, check tires in Flagstaff and ride on through to Albuquerque. There's weird stuff out there on the reservations and I don't pretend to know, or want to know, what it is. My dad was a long haul trucker. One story he always used to tell that made my hair stand on end was a trip he made through Washington state at night. He's going through a rural area, the nearest gas station is miles away, and there's not a car in sight. Just his headlights in absolute darkness and fields around him. So he's driving down this desolate stretch of road and starts seeing something glowing in the field on the left. He's trying to make out what it is but can't tell. As he gets closer, his entire body freezes up. It's a woman in a white dress, waving very slowly and staring blankly at his truck. As he drives by, her head is very clearly tracking his vehicle. Suffice to say, my dad crap his pants. I am required to go from Texas to Idaho, and Texas to Indiana, and Texas to Ithaca, New York regularly by van. My drives usually last 18 to 20 hours, sometimes I have wildlife in my vehicle, sometimes I'm on my way to pick an animal up. My job involves a lot of hands-on stuff. Driving is just the secondary of it. I probably book anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 miles in a week. That being said, I have seen a lot of road. I have seen so much death from accidents, death from dumb mistakes. I've seen motorcyclists split into many pieces as they slide on the road. I've seen a bridge collapse on several cars. I've seen hitchhikers, stray animals, wildlife, car chases, fresh accidents, tornadoes, etc. I think you get it. There was one time though. Unlike anything else. I was on one of my shortest drives but it was late in the night. 1 AM. I had to be in Austin. Texas as soon as possible as a citizen had found a bird that was incapacitated but alive in Houston, Texas. The bird had been sedated. I had to get it to this specialist as soon as possible, or it would surely die. Fortunately the vet who specializes in this particular wildlife said she had to be up for surgery early anyways, and if I could make it up by 4 AM she would take it. The highway between Austin and Houston is called Highway 290. It has a few places where it forces you to stop, but there are a few places that are completely undeveloped and very very dark. I wasn't tired. I was on high alert. After leaving the town of Page is a long stretch of very dark highway. No roadside lights, no development, just tree-lined two lanes highway going in both directions. I remember the highway kind of dips down shortly after that dark stretch, and opens up to the highway system that can take you to Bastrop or San Marcos. It wasn't unusual to be alone out here. 
I should also note that I am an avid bird watcher, in fact, it's my job to report sightings and behavior on a daily basis. Even at night when driving, I can spot a hawk or dove curtailing the power lines along the roads. At night, it wasn't unusual to see a deer, or coyote pacing the outside or even the middle of the roads. This time though, as my car dipped down the highway and the bridge to Bastrop came into sight, something came into view so big and white. I braked hard. My car jolted to a stop as the sheer vast white mass moved over me quickly. I could hear it whoosh. I don't know what came over me. I opened my window quickly and the bird in the kennel behind me started making a horrible noise. I forgot to look out the window and looked behind me and there inside the van was the sheer white mass with a huge beaked face and dark red eyes. I was in full panic. I couldn't move a muscle or make a sound. I was absolutely horrified to see what I saw. All while this little bird was letting out a horrible scream repeatedly. Mind you it's supposed to be sedated, it was like a knife to my nerves, and had cut all functionality. The white ghost-like creature appeared to wave its hand, and I felt my mouth open, and let out a raspy scream. The white creature bolted right in my face. I literally peed a little right in my jeans and my asshole clenched harder than a bank vault door. The creature moved past me and out of the front windshield. It turned back to look at my wide-eyed, frightened face. And took off into the sky. This is the first time I've said anything about this. I still get shaken when I think about those dark eyes and the swiftness it moved into my sight. I've never seen anything like that again. It's been six years now. To this day, is the only paranormal interaction I can truly say I've experienced. So my dad and I were driving down 441 in South Florida. It was probably about 4 in the morning and we hadn't seen another car for over an hour when we see this really bright orange light up ahead. As we get closer we see that it's a fairly old looking truck on the grass on the side of the road and the hood is completely engulfed in flames. My dad pulls over and, as I was quite young at the time, he told me to stay inside and he went to see if he could help the owners. I'm sitting in the passenger seat watching intently as he approaches the car but he can't find anybody. Then, practically at the same time, we notice Teresa woman in a torn casual blue dress standing over by the tree line just kind of staring at my dad and breathing really heavily. My dad looks really nervous but approaches her cautiously with his hands out before she turns and just bolts into the forest towards the farmland. He ran to the tree line to look for her but she had completely disappeared. As we were driving away it looked like the fire might have gone out but we weren't ever sure. I drove a moving van from San Diego to St. Louis and during a long stretch of empty road there was a car with its flashers on and the trunk and hood up. Slowed down to see if they needed help because it's a long ways from anywhere. This dude is sitting on his bumper in a dress shirt and no pants slash underwear and a machete, or at least what my mind thought was a machete in the low light. No idea what the F that was all about but I noped out. When I got to the hotel and was laying in bed I thought about it and figured the guy probably wasn't holding a machete. It doesn't help that to pass the time I usually listen to Stephen King audiobooks. I still can't figure out why he didn't have pants on though. The pantsless man still keeps me awake at night. A few months back I was taking a race hauler back east from California. I was on I-10 in New Mexico. I got tired and decided to stop on an off-ramp. In parts of New Mexico there are off-ramps that are literally nothing more than an off and on ramp. No roads to take when you exit they typically have wide shoulders and I didn't consider it an unsafe place to stop. When I took the exit there was a small travel trailer pulled over and it appeared the driver was getting some sleep so I felt better not really being the only one in the middle of nowhere. I slept for 3 or 4 hours and woke up. It was still very dark out and cold, I looked in my mirror and noticed the camper was gone. I don't remember how long I sat there, maybe a few minutes and then looked in my mirror again and noticed a vehicle very close to the rear of my trailer no lights on. Honestly I saw the silhouette and thought it was a cop, didn't think much of it figured he was taking a break or maybe even running my plates as the rig I had was expensive and quite commonly stolen. 
A few more minutes passed and I saw the headlights flash, unsure of what was happening I turned on the truck and prepared to get the hell out of there. The headlights flashed quickly two more times and then I heard a door slam, an older Chevy Silverado took off past me and crossed over the highway and headed west on 10. I waited about 5 minutes and after turning on all the exterior lights I walked around the truck. The best I can tell they were planning to siphon diesel out of my tanks, the cap was off the right side tank, and also the side entry door had prime marks near the latch. Still freaks me out a bit and I'm more careful of where I stop these days. Used to run dedicated between Newark, New Jersey, Phoenix, Arizona, and Nevada. I always prefer to run nights for obvious reasons. One night around 2.30 in the morning I was on Highway 318 north of Rachel, Nevada pretty much in what many would consider the middle of nowhere. CB channels are dead, phone has no service, just straight up middle of nowhere. Then I saw the strangest lights I had ever seen. Lights that weren't that high in altitude and essentially teleporting across the sky. I had seen some weird stuff before on this route, but this was the strangest due to the low altitude and bizarre activity that seemed outside our realm of physics. A little after 9-11 about a year later, my ex and I, both black and both active duty are traveling across America for an adventure to get to our next duty station instead of flying out. We were in the Midwest, I think near the OK and Arkansas border on Interstate 40. We were on a two lane and in the left lane about to pass a truck driver and then go back into the right lane. As we got about midway the truck driver started driving into our lane. We slowed down, he went back over, we speed up he crept over again. I was driving by the way. He clearly did not want me to drive past him. I slowed down again, and then sped up even faster. He completely cut us off and I ended up driving 85 miles per hour in the dirt to avoid being hit by the driver, I almost lost control. I got back on the road and I continued to speed until I couldn't see him in my review mirror. That night we went to a hotel to check in. The clerk was acting funny, people were staring at us, we did not feel comfy at all. Even when the clerk asked what brung us here, we were like oh yeah, just some active duty military here, going to our next duty station and wanted to drive across America. We went straight to our room and didn't come out until check out. The next day we went back to our car and there was a bullet hole in our bumper. My car at the time was brand new, as in, a few days before I had just driven it off the lot, and I was proud of my car so I did the 365 checks a lot like the rental car company does, and my car was pristine the day before when we were in New Mexico. So not only were we almost driven off the road and almost killed, we were shot at, at some point. I'm never coming to Midwest again. Driving from Alberta to Southern Texas for a bike event, it was about 1 AM and I was starting to get pretty tired. I was somewhere in Idaho, taking a scenic route because I'm into small creepy roads. I saw a McDonald's, Uoj Kraipi, with the lights on so assuming it was open, stopped. It was a little weird that there would be a McDonald's that far out in the middle of nowhere on a little back road, but whatever. Door opened and walked in, and no one was there. I called back, no one. Being the curious weirdo I am I decided to go through the staff only door to the kitchen. Hot oil and really badly burned chips, fries, in the deep fryer, fresh food, but no one there. Took a walk around the place, and no one. Weirdest spooky thing ever. I was taking a load of paper from Alabama to Ohio. Well the paper mill I loaded it was in the middle of BFE and was probably 65 miles away from the nearest interstate. I was a little low on my legal driving hours so I figured I would spend the night at the shipper. Well the shipper doesn't allow overnight parking. Great. So I get loaded and roll out. I set my GPS for the nearest truck stop which was 70 miles. There was one closer but it didn't have showers according to Google reviews, so I'm rolling along this winding country road just taking my time because it's dark. I flip my high beams on when I get to a straight section of the road and I can see a figure walking. 
I remember thinking how brave they must be. Well as I get closer I notice the figure is a man in an all white suit. As my lights uncovered more of him I noticed he had a bag slung over his shoulder, not a big one but big enough to notice. As I started to ease the truck over to left side of the road to pass my him he turned and stuck his thumb out as if to hitch a ride. Now I normally wouldn't have a problem with that except the fact that when he turned towards the truck, the place where his face was supposed to be was completely red and blank. No eyes. No nose. No mouth. Blank. Red and blank. I must have hit my door lock button about 30 times. I made it to the truck stop and waited until daylight to take my shower. I don't know what I saw that night but whatever it was, it cannot ride with me. My friend's father is a truck driver in India. One day he told me a story which changed my perspective on life and truck drivers especially. One night his father was taking a load from rural Madhya Pradesh Indian state. The state is one of the backwards and poorly developed states so you can imagine the state of highways there. There were no lights whatsoever except your headlight. Anyway, as he took up the load and drove towards the road joining the highways, his assistant warned him about that road. Apparently it was famous for deaths and paranormal activities. But he was an atheist and never believed in such things. So he drove up the road and right there in the middle of the road tier was a burnt SUV. He was scared and didn't know what to do. So he decided to just steer the truck into the shoulders and drive away. He knew very well not to get down at this time in this road. At this point the assistant got very afraid and started cursing and shouting and praying. So he started the truck and right as he passed the SUV he just steered right, which turned out to be a big mistake. From the nearby trees branches, about 10 guys jumped on the truck. They were the famous Spolti decoits known for their brutality and were absolute savages. They leave their victim's head on the spike for the lols. When he heard the sound and saw 10 guys with 5 foot rods and shotguns his adrenaline went into overdrive. He just did started to zigzag for shaking them off. Suddenly one gunshot and his assistant's head got blew up. Another rod blow to his right and the glasses shattered and struck him right on his face and eyes. But he didn't give up and kept on driving with erratic gunshots and guys one by one fell down from the truck. He finally reached the highway and drove 50 miles with a dead guy and one eye before reaching a hospital. This incident happened 20 years ago, he lost vision in the right eye and his face is full of scars. But you know what the saddest part was? The police even after all these years didn't even make a single arrest in this case. Hope highway security has improved these days. My dad used to drive produce back and forth between California and Arizona, but the worst thing was that he driving on a very dark road one night and it almost hit someone that was laying on the side of the road. So he pulled over and when he checked it out it was a woman that was dead and like a hundred feet away from her was a flipped over car that had a dude all cut open and was somehow barely breathing. The dude died before medical help could get there, but he had asked my dad if the baby was still alive, but my dad and the emergency personnel could not find the baby in the area. The imps had told my dad that the dude had at least been like that for a couple hours and that they had never seen someone cut open like the way the dude was. We, me and my co-driver, were taking a load through Oregon along I-84. At about 2 a.m. it starts snowing, and we're about 20 miles away from Dead Man Pass. There is no way in hell I'm going over that pass in snow so I pulled it over at the next rest area and called in a weather delay. My co-driver, being kind of a gung-ho, super trucker type, gave me crap for pulling over but went back to sleep. The snow turned into a full-on blizzard and the rest area filled up pretty quick. But for every truck that pulled in, two or three would keep going towards the pass, apparently deciding it was worth the risk. At about 10 AM the next morning, the snow had stopped and the roads cleared enough to make it passable. My clock had run out by this time so my co-driver was the one driving. As we got to the pass, the scene that greeted us was absolute chaos. There were chains littering the road, They'll fly off if not properly installed, and ambulances and police cars would pass us every few minutes. As we got to the downhill side we saw why. 
On the way down we counted at least a dozen trucks, jackknifed, tipped over or overturned completely. At least two had gone over the edge, their tracks leading to empty space. Several had body bags laid out beside them and one had plowed into the rear end of a minivan. I will never forget that experience. It drove home just how dangerous my chosen profession really is. That co-driver never gave me crap about pulling over again. I-80 Nebraska just west of North Platte it started snowing pretty heavy. About 1 a.m. Very cold outside and dry snow. This is the kind that doesn't stick to the windshield or road immediately, just swirls around. The snow flying straight at me, seemingly going 1,000 miles per hour, my headlights reflecting of each individual crystal like I'm going light speed and the snow are stars in the sky. It's easy to get vertigo, or straight up hypnotized by snow like this. Then the crazy stuff happened. The wind kicked up, howling blowing the snow everywhere, every direction, and then lightning. Massive lightning in a blizzard. Flash, boom. Flash, boom. The hole inside of the cab lights up like it's daytime. It was like for a few minutes I was in some other dimension, or the matrix or something. Like being inside a tornado. Anyway, First time seeing a lightning storm while snowing. Driving my flatbed from St. Helena, California, to Wiley, Texas. This happened somewhere near the Texahoma border. I picked up a hitchhiker. He was standing by the side of the road with a trembling thumb out. Trembling from the cold maybe? Soon I would learn that this was the trembling of fear. The trembling of a man who looked as though he has seen a ghost. Where to? I asked. Please, I know this is weird. Just take me to a bar, for I need a drink. I will buy you a drink or a hot sandwich. I thought this was odd. I have picked up many hitchhikers in my day, and such a request was never asked. As I was about to say get lost buddy, whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. But I looked into the man's eyes and I saw terror. Something compelled me to open my passenger door for this man. He entered. At the bar, the hitchhiker began his tale. Earlier on this night of torrential rain, the hitchhiker was seeking a ride. Next to the road he sat with his thumb out. For hours he waited in the rain. A few cars passed, but none slowed. Frustrated, the hitchhiker was about to rest his thumb and find shelter for the night. And then he saw headlights. Headlights of a very slow approaching car. The hitchhiker eagerly approached the car waiting for it to stop. Oddly, the slow moving car continued drifting forward. Maybe the pace was slowing, or maybe this car was always moving at such a slow speed. But this car never came to a complete stop. The headlights pierced the rain, as the hitchhiker stood confused. Will this car stop? Perhaps I should get in. I have never seen a car drive so slowly like this. The hitchhiker decided to just jump in this car. He stumbled to the rain as he pulled the passenger door and had a seat. To his horror, there was no one in the driver's seat. There was no one in the back seat. The car was bare. But it kept moving forward. The headlights still on, but now in front of him as he looked out of the windshield, as the car continued to creep forward. The hitchhiker quickly exited this ghost car ran for miles. He rested. He ran some more. Rested, ran some more. Finally, after catching his breath, he stuck out his thumb and stood by a road. The hitchhiker then saw headlights. But this time the car was driving at a reasonable pace. It wasn't a car at all, it was a flatbed truck. That is where the hitchhiker and I met. The bartender brings the hitchhiker and me our beer, the service at this bar sucked. And then, two men, drenched in rain came running into the bar. They pointed at the hitchhiker. Hey, there's the idiot that tried jumping into our car as we were pushing it through the rain. While going to school I would often join a friend of mine who worked for a moving company. We would pack up people's homes and deliver their goods and unpack at their new residence. Not supernatural but creepy. I cannot recall which state we were in but were stopped for the evening at a loves. 
was an active tornado about five miles away and we were watching it while drinking a few beers before passing out when manager of the loves and a group of four to five guys pulled up and asked if we had seen a huge man wandering around the parking lot. The way these guys described the size of the man implied he was a goddamn giant. Apparently three to four days ago a driver vanished while his tractor slash trailer was seven to eight blocks away from the loves. He never contacted his employer so they used the GPS transponder in the rig to track down the location. No sign of the driver. The previous evening a huge man was caught underneath a parked rig clutching the undercarriage like the beast monster in Big Trouble Little China. A driver in a parked rig nearby saw the man crawling around down there and called the loves but the man vanished. He had been spotted several times in the last 24 hours lurking around in the parking lot so we were warned to keep an eye out for him and to contact the police or loves if we spotted him. About 30 minutes later a giant man covered in filth walks by our truck. Covered in grease, dirt and a fair amount of blood. He is also 6 feet 5 inches and 250 to 300 pounds my wingman calls the cops and I follow the guy a few hundred feet behind him. I was smoking a cigarette at the time and he abruptly turned around and I continued walking the same direction pretending I have no idea who he is. The man had the eyes of a feral raccoon and asked to bum a smoke, which I provide. He then continues to walk away and I lose line of sight as he passes between a row of trucks. I continue to walk in that direction but as soon as I round the parked truck he has vanished. Cops came and continued to look for him but to no avail. Needless to say we didn't get much sleep between the crazy man and the freaking tornado. Edit. I should clarify the giant crazy man was the missing driver of the abandoned semi-truck. And did not kill and eat him. Possibly supernatural, certainly creepy. On another trip we were in Southern California picking up a load from a private residence. Everything was supposed to be packed and staged for us so we just have to load our trailer and be on our way. But nothing was packed and the client was not there nor answering the number we had been provided. Eventually a neighbor came over with the keys to the house and we realized nothing is packed. The neighbor is behaving strangely and will not enter the house and has no interest in speaking to us. After calling the main officer we then began to pack the house up. It was a nice upper middle class neighborhood and home. Entire house was spotless except one of the back bedrooms. The room, a female child's room, was thrashed, I'm not talking about dirty but literally destroyed. Mattress was literally ripped into multiple pieces, there was a bird cage mangled into the size of a softball. Multiple holes in the walls, broken picture frames on the walls and every single item in the room and a huge homogeneous pile on the floor. I vividly recall the sliding closet doors smashed into the sheet rock in the wall across from the closet having deep gouges in them and were broken in a way that implied significant force was used from inside the closet. No family pets, neighbor eventually confirmed though there was the birdcage, based upon there not being any food or dish for them. House had some creepy ass vibes before discovering that room and afterwards we couldn't get out of there fast enough. When we are removing our prep gear, mats and pads so we don't damage walls while moving furniture, the neighbor returned. I asked what was the story with these people, mangled room and not being on site or answering their phone, he gave us some background. The family who owned the house, wife, dad one daughter 12, had quadriplegic daughter. They had lived in the house about two years before the daughter started reporting hearing strange voices and noises in the night. A series of progressive incidents culminated in some event that resulted in the kids' room becoming destroyed one night and the family fleeing the house and refusing to return to it. I was hoping that when we got to the destination for their stuff the family would be there so I could hear the story firsthand. But it was a storage facility in WA and I never had the opportunity to learn more. The image of the kids' room sticks with me because of how completely destroyed everything was in contrast to the rest of the household. My older brother was driving me and my sister back from our biological parents' house back to our foster parents, they live a few cities away so a long drive with loots of stops. We pulled into a gas station and when we got out, for snacks, bathroom, etc., everything felt surreal? Like, as soon as we got out of the car we didn't hear anything, no people, no cars, nothing, it was dead silent. 
We went inside and looked around for a bit before choosing some snacks. My sister went out for the bathroom and when she came back she tugged on my brother's jacket and said we have to go my brother, obviously confused, what? Hold on, I need to pay and the my sister just pulls him away, causing him to drop everything. He kinda got mad and pulled away but when he turned around she was out the door and sprinting towards the car. Me and my brother looked confused at each other, we agreed I would follow her and see if she was okay. From what she told me, she was definitely not. We've both seen some weird things before and are both understandably very weary of things around us. She told me that when going to the bathroom she heard loud, scratching footsteps, like someone was dragging their feet with boots on. She ran into the bathroom, locked the door and did her business. As she was about to open the door she felt scared all of a sudden and instead of opening it, she put her ear on the door and listened. There it was again, the dragging feet and this time some huffing. She stayed in the bathroom until it stopped, she slightly opened the door and seeing nothing, she bolted to the storefront and tried dragging us out. I decided I would help calm her down by bringing her to the bathroom and showing her no one was there. We got out the car and I noticed my brother was paying so we made it quick, we walked over near the bathrooms and I looked around, when I looked around the side of the building I saw a small switchblade knife just on the dirt, it was open and I could see the blade. It was shiny enough that I could see it clearly because of the back door light. I've never backpedaled so hard, we ran back to the car, my brother in tow. I didn't tell her what I saw until a few days later when she asked again, I was scared I would freak her out so I didn't say anything immediately. Scariest thing that's happened to me and my sister up to date. We've had freaky things but I think that was the first time it might have been a real person. Not a truck driver but would travel to and from Shaw AFB in Florida many times each weekend to see family. I had a BMW with a carbon fiber front splitter for extra downforce. To get to Shaw, you have to drive about 45 minutes through back roads and unlit areas. After getting off of I-95, I was cruising on a dark road doing about 65 and I hear this large thud because I ended up hitting something. I pulled over and ended up decapitating a rabbit that was in the middle of the road with my front splitter. I got out of the car to check and it's pitch black in the middle of the night and I get this I'm being watched feeling. I quick got back in the car and as I was driving off I could see the reflection of eyes in both my rear view as well as the front via the fog lights and high beams. Turns out there was a pack of coyotes watching the rabbit before I hit it. Not paranormal but still creepy as hell. My friend and I were driving from Maine to Las Vegas. At a rest stop late at night, empty aside from a beat-up dark truck with a blue tarp covering the back, I went in to use the bathroom. Only person in a large men's room. I used the private stall at the very back, there were five or six. I hear the bathroom door swing open as I'm taking a leak, and heavy boots walk inside ponderously. They stop outside the door to my stall, to which I raise an eyebrow and I remember seeing large black work boots under the door. He tries the door, which is bizarre because it's the only one closed in the bathroom. Someone's in here, I say. He tries the door again, this time aggressively, as if trying to somehow wrench it open, sometimes you don't swing the lock all the way and it can still come open. I raise my voice, look man, I am in here. At this point, I'm struck by an overwhelming sense of dread. I get goosebumps and feel that sensation you get when you're being watched but you don't know who or what is watching you. I don't scare easily, but I was extremely scared looking at those boots and wondering what would happen next. Then, the man walks away kind of fast, and for some reason I get the sense that I screwed up his plan, whatever it was. The bathroom door swings closed. When I get back into my friend's car, his huge Great Dane is growling like mad and my friend looks freaked out. I tell him, you won't believe what just, but he cuts me off, did you see that man? Puzzled, I shake my head. Ah, uh, no. My friend says, Zar, dog, started barking like crazy as soon as that man left his truck and went to the bathroom. It's as if he was following you. Zar started freaking out and trying to hop out the window. He wanted to get under the blue tarp covering the truck bed. The guy came out in quite a hurry and sped off. 
I was just about to run in and check on you. He looked at me very seriously. Zar never barks like that. Ever. I've always remembered that sensation of absolute dread. And the blue tarp over the truck. To this day, I wonder what may have been under it. Not a long haul trucker, but once a newspaper deliver person in rural Georgia. I usually drove my route between 4 a.m. down all sorts of dirt roads rally cross style flinging papers along the way. It was mostly fun, and I had some neat interactions with rabbits sometimes racing me on the road, and near missing owls. However, I was always at least partly creeped out for the entire ride with the completely unrealistic and supernatural fear that I was never really driving alone. Always afraid that at some point, something from the back seat would come out of the darkness and whisper in my ear. Anyways, getting to the most notable creepy part. I only ever saw people three times on my route. Once when I drove up on a wreck, another when someone ran me off the road, and a third. There was one road I always drove down the fastest because it was the creepiest. No lights. No houses. Just long fences down a perfectly straight road that was hypnotically long. The only interruption in seeing that my headlights could shine light on along the way was an old style barn with hay loft and second story soar for the loft. I never wanted to look at it but ended up glancing at it every night as I drove by. Always the same. Tall, creepy, old, leaning, door locked, moving shadows, gone. One night, as I was approaching, I noticed the door swinging out, open. Of course, I had to look this time. As I drove past, I glimpsed a pale person in a nightgown standing in the doorway. I actually slammed on brakes and reversed wondering if what I saw was real. The person or apparition was gone, and I never saw the door open again for as long as I drove the route. I was hauling lumber on 36E between Fortuna, California, and Red Bluff, California, on my way to the 5S this was in 95 or 96, right before the coastal lumber industry folded. Route 36 is basically a glorified logging road. It twists through the mountain ranges and goes to one lane several times. Anyway, I got a late start, which was okay, as I liked driving at night anyway. It was probably around 10 or 11 at night. As I crept up into the mountains, there was a nasty bit of fog. I rounded a corner, and suddenly there were all these deer just standing in the middle of the road, in the fog. It was kind of creepy, just seeing all these deer standing in the fog, in the middle of the road. I'm used to seeing them running across the road, not standing. I blew my horn, and they all turned and looked into my headlights, their ears twitching, the buck's antlers casting long twisted shadows into the fog. I blew my horn again, and they lazily walked to the side of the road. I idled forward between them. I looked out my driver window and saw the bucks and does warily looking back at me as I drove through them. But that wasn't the creepy part. I reached the peak and started back down. The fog on the eastern side abated. But as I rounded a corner I saw a guy walking down the road, down the middle of the oncoming lane, his back to me. He had shoulder-length black hair, wet and stringy from the moisture that had been in the air. He wore a faded blue wool-lined jean jacket, hands in pockets, and darker jean pants. When my lights hit him, he swerved toward the shoulder of the other lane, giving me room. Then the most horrifying thing happened. I was going maybe 25 or 30 at this point, but as I came up to him, he suddenly bolted right in front of my truck. The last thing I saw was his wide black eyes and his mouth open in a silent yell, a black pit in his white face shining in my headlights before disappearing under the horizon of my hood. I stood on the brakes, the cab and the trailer behind hopping. I remember just thinking Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus. I hoped out of the cab, I don't remember turning on the flashers, and ran back behind the truck. I saw him walking back up the hill, behind my truck, hands in his jacket pockets, his back illuminated by my red lights. He looked back at me, his black eyes and black mouth now grinning toothlessly. Then he dashed into the trees at the edge of the road. I was so scared, I didn't call out. I just got in my cab and drove on. I still dream about those wide eyes and that unholy mouth disappearing under my hood. 
I hope the dreams stop now. Not a trucker but I did have a surreal experience while I was driving across Australia with some friends in a camper van. After a particularly long day driving we were still on the road around midnight still 20 odd miles away from where we were camping. We pulled into a truck stop for supplies and I stayed outside and had a cigarette. I was already kinda wound up from driving all day and their pitch black night and silence was building up a sense of unease in me. All of a sudden a large truck pulled up that was filled with live pigs emitting the most terrifying screams, sounded so similar to human screams in that moment. It was the most terrified I have ever been in my entire life. I was living in upstate New York several summers ago when there was a pretty intense solar flare and the aurora borealis was expected to be visible in VT slash NH. I couldn't get anyone interested enough to go with me so I ended up taking a pretty far drive by myself in hopes I'd get to see it. I was working at a restaurant at the time so I didn't leave until 7 pm or so, so I didn't have much daylight left. I stupidly just kept driving and eventually had the realization that I was a couple hours from home, by myself, in and out of reception, and I was starting to get really tired. I turn around to head home and was getting so tired that shadows started to seem like they were jumping out at me. Crappy reception made it difficult to follow my phone's direction so I was having to backtrack with some frequency. Somehow I end up on this dirt road with cornfields on either side and I became overwhelmed with anxiety. I ended up coming to a point where there were cornfields on just one side and a couple distant houses on the other side. At this point I decide that this can't possibly be the right way and I start to do a K-turn. I had been blaring music in my car to try to stay awake so as I'm doing this K-turn I sense something over the sound of the music and I get incredibly anxious. I turn down the volume right as I turn to look around. At the same moment I see a very angry dog barking and lunging at my window. I put the car into gear and hauled ass while the dog chased me for a few 100 feet. The adrenaline kept me awake for most of the remaining drive and I never lost that sense of doom until I pulled into my driveway. I was so bothered by it all that I had this desire to never leave my house again. Luckily that wore off in the next couple days. After reading a few stories about truckers seeing dogs as a precursor to falling asleep at the wheel and getting into an accident, it makes me wonder about the dog's significance that night. Before I became a truck driver I was moving to California from Louisiana. After passing up San Antonio there wasn't much till El Paso, any gas stations were very far apart. I pull over to this tiny tiny gas station that was closed but I could still pump gas. No one was there except around 50 to 100 cats that all look alike most lined up just watching me. They were everywhere, on the gas pumps all around he building. I did have a picture of some of them it might be my first Instagram post. I'll see if I can find it. I do hazmat certification for truck drivers here in the state of Nevada, we run one of the only offices that do them in the state so I see tons of drivers every day. The amount of UFO type stories I hear from drivers is crazy, always when they are driving up through the grand wasteland that is Nevada between Vegas and Reno. Almost always they include colored lights moving faster than any plane they've seen and very erratically. Sometimes affecting electrical equipment in the vehicle, causing radio static etc. A lot of guys assume these are aliens from Area 51 or something of the like, but just as many think they could be government test craft out of Nellis or Area 51. There's also been a few stories of strange creatures crossing the road in the night. Most common depiction is hairless and four-legged very possibly some kind of genetic mutation from the atomic test site affecting a coyote or something. Either way unsettling stuff, God bless Nevada. My dad was a taxi driver when I was very young and he told me this still puzzled him. There is an old abbey in the middle of nowhere near my town that is supposedly very haunted. He was driving past it one night after dropping off a passenger when he saw this guy across the road from the abbey flagging him down. He got in and asked my dad to drive him to the next village and asked if he would wait while he got a takeaway. 
My dad said this guy seemed really off and just didn't speak or engage with him in any way apart from the initial encounter. He got to the takeaway and the guy said he wouldn't be long and my dad watched him go in. After 10 minutes my dad nipped in to see how long he was going to be and found the place empty. The woman at the counter said they had no customers come in for over an hour. I like to think he helped a ghost satisfy his Chinese takeaway craving. I was driving in the middle of the night through Kana's when I heard a call for help on my CB radio. A guy was saying I think need help, I'm having trouble breathing. I asked him where he was and he was not too far so I called 911 and headed in that direction. I came up to where the guy was and the ambulance was just leaving but the cops were still there. They said he was going to the hospital for probable heart attack but the officer was confused as to how I knew that he needed help and where he was. I told him about the call on the CB radio, the officer said there was no such radio in the guy's car. 